For the next example, uh, let's see, let's move on to the next page. If x equals to 4, that is, oh, what is f of x? There's a little typo here. That is, uh, what, what is f of x, all right? Well, all, we're, all they're asking us to do, what is the y value related to the x value of x equals to 4, or they're asking us what is the output related to the input x equals to 4, or they're asking us what is the function value for the input x equals to 4. So different ways to explain the same thing. Well, the, but the way we're going to do is just use, it's using the same. So f of x, let's recall the function first f of x equals to 2x over x minus 2 and simply evaluate the function at x equals to 4 so 2 times 4 over 4 minus 2 and let me use a different color for that and then from here well what do we have 2 times 8 in the numerator that equals to I mean 2 times 4 equals to 8 rather and 4 minus 2 which equals to 2 and that equals to 4, all right? That equals also 4. Okay, so that's the result. That's the output related to the input x equals to 4. But then they're asking us uh, what point on the graph of f of x? Well, so let's go and write this. So, so this function value um, describes the point 4 comma 4 which is on the graph of f of x all right so that's essentially what we what, what this is telling us all right uh, for for the next part right here, f of, if f of x equals one, what x? What point or what points could be more than one point? By the way, are on the graph of f of x. Okay, so we need to be very careful here because um, uh, this time they're giving us the output value. So we're we're given the output. They're asking us what where the, what is the input or what where the input for which the output equals to one. And again, my advice, always write the original function once again, all right? So that is f of x equals to 2x divided by x minus 2, where, where in this case, ah, uh, what's that? Okay, let me highlight this. If f of x equals to 1, let's replace f of x with, with 1 in this case. That'll be... Well, 1 equals to 2x over x minus 2. All right. Okay, so from here, well, now we need to solve this equation for the variable x. And, well, uh, this is one of those kind of rational equations that we need. Okay, let's... Uh, let me, let me write a 1 in the denominator, an invisible 1. And to solve a rational equation like this that contains 1 fraction equals 1 single fraction, all we do is simply cross multiply. Cross multiply. And that is x minus 2 equals to 2x. So now we have, <clears throat> now we have a a simpler linear equation for which, again, you might want to have all the variables on the left-hand side of the equation and all the constant terms on the right-hand side. So let me let me move the constant first. So so the right-hand side does is not left by itself. I mean, with with a theorem rather. So that'll be okay. Cancel the twos. That's going to give us ah. Uh, that's an x equals to. 2x plus 2, and then how about we move the negative 2x, and that equals to, okay, cancel, that equals to x minus x, which is negative x equals to 2. But we don't want negative x, we need to get the x by itself, we need to divide both sides by, by negative 1, all right? <clears throat> 
and that's going to give us x equals to uh, negative 2. Well, that's now, that's the input for which, uh, for which the output is x equals to 1. But now the question here now, uh, instead of looking just at, um, at the machine approach, the function approach, well, now let's relate it to its geometric meaning, that is, what is the point or what are the points that are, that are represented by this? Well, the only point, so, the point, on the graph the point on the graph of f of x is the point of oh, careful x equals to negative 2 and f of x or y equals to 1 right so that's our point in this case Okay, how do we how do we find the domain of this function? Well, uh, again, what's the first thing that stands out to you about this function that can potentially show its I don't know its weaknesses? You know, again, thinking uh, of the machine approach, so. We can input what our favorite value to a function. However, there's values that can make the function blow up, like the coffee maker example we did the other day, for which we can put different things. But we can. But if we put what uh, gasoline is going to blow up, right? So think of this when looking at a function like this. So what's the red flag for this function? The red flag for this function. That is a fraction. That's number one. That is a fraction. How do we deal with those? <coughs> yes. All right. So we look for those restricted values. You don't want the denominator equal to zero. Uh, so in this case, well, what we do? Set the denominator x minus 2 equal to 0, solve for x, that's x equal to 2, and this is the restricted value. So we need to restrict that number from the domain, and just think about it. What happens if you, if you plug in 2 for this function? 2 times 2 in the numerator is 4, that's fine. However, 2 minus 2 in the denominator, that's going to give you 0, and the function is going to blow up to undefined. So, well, we need to restrict the domain. Okay, number one, um, identify that number or plot it on the number line with an open circle. That's because it's going to be a restricted value. And then shade everywhere except where we have this hold that describes that two is undefined for this function. So from here, we will be able to see the, uh, with a better visual how to get the interval notation for this. That is, um, what's that? Um, negative infinity to two, but in this case, well, parentheses for the two, then we need to jump the whole with a union symbol, continue with the two all the way to infinity. So that's the graph or the, the number line representation of the domain, the interval notation, and set builder notation. All right, that is, that is going to be, well, it's a lot shorter to write x such that x can be pretty much everything except, except 2. All right, so three different ways that we need to represent by a number line, showing those all four where we have this restricted value, well, in this case it's only one, interval notation, set builder notation. All right, let's see, list the intercepts for f of x. Okay, so from, to find the intercepts, uh, well, of course we're gonna have two different intercepts, x intercepts and y intercepts, that's what we do for now for functions of, well, one single variable. All right, well, so number one, let's get the, let's get those intercepts. So the x-intercept, how do we get that? Well, x-intercept, uh, to get the x-intercept, set y 
equals to zero, solve for x. All right? Set y equals to zero, solve for x. So that's what that's the process. Well, let's go about doing it for this function. Let me write the function again at the top first of all. That is f of x equals to 2x divided by x minus 2. Okay, so we need to set the y equal to 0, so you might want to change the notation f of x to y again. That way it's going to be a lot easier for us to get the, in, the, the intercept with a different notation. A notation that we are most uh, used to work with, which works better when working with, um, what's it called, with, um, uh, with intercepts. All right, so let's set y equals to zero. That's gonna leave us with an equation 2x over x minus two. And well, how about that divided to one, divided by one rather, cross multiply. And then, well, that's gonna give us zero times x minus two equals to 1 times 2x, which is simply 2x. This is going to be a 0 equals to 2x, and if we divide both sides by 2, that's going to give us x equals to 0. However, need to be very careful here. Uh, the problem is not finished here, and, that, and this is what I disagree with the textbook, because the, for the textbook, the intercepts uh, are only x, are only values. However, intercepts are meant to be represented as order pairs. Well, how do we get those? The how do we write the x-intercept? Well, as an order, as an order pair, zero comma zero. All right. For um, what's that? Let's see. For. For the y-intercept, instead we do uh, set x equal to zero and solve for y. Right. So we do the reverse. If we want the x-intercept, we make the other variable, in this case, the y equals to 0, and solve for x. If we want the y-intercept, we set the other variable, which is in this case x, and, set, and solve for, for the y. All right, so in this case, what do we get? Well, uh, this example, I don't think it's going to be that uh, of interesting, because it's going to give us um, just the 0, 0, you'll see. So y equals to 2 times 0 over 0 minus 2. So essentially, set x equal to 0, right? And that's going to be huh? <clears throat> 0 and 0. That equals to y equals to 0 over negative 2, which equals to zeros. Divide any divide zero by any number except zero, we should get zero. Alright? So that equals to that's gonna be the order pair. Uh, what is that? Um, mm -hmm. The point zero comma zero. And well again, that uh, that again is not like the most interesting uh, function to work with. Let me give you another one. So how about you guys? Um, you guys use the back side of the page and let me add another one. Find the intercepts of f of x equals to 3x plus 5 divided by 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1. Okay, I'll let you work on that one for a couple minutes. Okay, x-intercept. x-intercept, okay, so how do we get the x-intercept? What do we do to get the x-intercept? Set, Set y equal to 0. Now, 
Whenever you whenever you set y equals zero, my advice, okay, that this, this is gonna be this is gonna work better for this kind of exercises. Just start writing another pair for which the y equals to zero. Then we're gonna fill in the blank, the x, um, the x coordinate by whatever we get with whatever we get from solving uh, from setting the the function equal to f of x or y equal to zero. So you might want to also change the notation to y instead of x. And then, well, in this case, how about, you know, uh, what's that? Zero equals to 3x plus 5 divided by, what's that, um, 2x minus 1. And again, you can think of this zero, think of this zero as zero over 1. This way we can do the cross multiplication to solve the equation. That's going to give us a 0 times 2x minus 1 equals to 3x plus 5. Multiplying any quantity by 0, that's a 0 equals to 3x plus 5. And what's next? Add or rather subtract the 5 from both sides. That's going to leave us with 3x equals to negative 5. And then divide both sides by 3. That's going to give us what? x equals to negative 5 thirds. And this is the number we're going to fill in this blank in here, negative 5 thirds, which is going to be the x-intercept. So the x-intercept, that occurs when the y equals to 0. Now we're going to do a similar process, but just in a way, it's just reversed, all right? Let's see. That'll be uh, the y-intercept. And in this case, well, we do the opposite. We don't set the y equal to zero. What, what do we do in this case? Set the x equal to zero. All right, set x equal to zero. And you might want to write another pair already with an x equals to zero, comma, blank. That's going to be the y value of whatever we get from evaluating the function at, y, at x equals to zero. So y equals to two times zero plus five, I mean three times zero plus five, over two times zero minus one. That's gonna give us y equals to five, three times zero is zero. Let me do the zero first. Zero plus five and zero minus one. That equals five divided by negative one, which reduces to negative five. All right. <clears throat> you might want to verify this using your graphing calculator. Let me let me give you a visual of this. Okay, so let me open the graphing calculator and let me <laughs> type the function. So uh, let me clear all this. Y equals. Okay, so to graph a rational function, well, actually, uh, this is very um, case sensitive. If you don't write the or the syntax sensitive, rather, uh, if you write the incorrect function, so uh, you may get a different. Well, of course, you will actually you will get a different graph. So in this case, coming back to the to the paper here, so think of this function having parentheses around the numerator and invisible parentheses around the denominator, because well. This is going to matter when we type the function over that 3x plus 5. Close parentheses before hitting the division function. And we'll open a new group of parentheses for the denominator and then to type the 2x minus 1. All right. <clears throat> and let's graph. All right. Now, from, from this graph, we can see that... Uh, that the x-intercept, that is uh, the, va the value at x of x at which it crosses the x-axis. What is this? Negative 5 thirds. Let's see. Negative 5 thirds is almost negative 6 thirds, isn't it? Which is technically negative 2. And we can see it here. Well, let me zoom it in just so you can see that, um, that intercept. OK, zoom. Zoom in. Let me go somewhere maybe somewhere here, so we can see the intercept more closely. All right, that's, that's uh, okay, if we divided this by thirds, okay, we can do that actually. 
we go to window and scale uh, and scale the um, the x's not by one but rather by thirds you know you can go back to the graph each line right here will represent negative one third negative two thirds and negative three thirds and negative four thirds and here is our negative five thirds which is in this case the x intercept for this graph let me go back to the usual window uh, let me fix it so that the scaling for the x's is not by a third each uh, each um, each mark so it's still representing one and also let me go back to the original zoom standard that is okay now we want to locate the y-intercept what did we get for the y-intercept zero negative five all right so let's see let me go to the graph and in this case, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Well, it's kind of all overlapping here. Let me let me zoom. Let me zoom in. And let me go somewhere where around the um, oh come on zoom in somewhere where the intercept is at. And well. That's a y equals negative 5. Okay, let me go. Let me just keep dragging the star right here. And well, it's roughly going to give me the, uh, the y intercept. But of course, we can, vi we can see. Let me, ch let me change the zoom instead. Zoom standard first, zoom 6. And then let me do zoom, zoom in again. Zoom in. And let, me, let me do it here. Hopefully, this works. Um, Enter. No, it's not going to work. Uh, maybe zoom standard number six. Let me do zoom in. Let me just go a couple of units down. Oops, that's not what I meant. Uh, zoom in. And okay, let me keep scrolling down. Maybe here. Click enter. And well, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Well, that negative five should be should be visible down here. All right. And well, that's how that's the visual of what we're doing here. All right. So now we get a, a better example that gives us a more interesting, more interesting results right here. Now let's add another. Let's let's add a part B. So determine. whether the point uh, the point <coughs> one comma eight and say let me do simply two or simp let me do three comma, I don't know, seven, for instance. Hopefully that, uh, yeah, that should work, okay. Whether the points are on the graph of f of x, right? <clears throat> That's going to take us back to part A of the, of the exercises we have been working. So go for it. I'll let you work on that part.
Yes. Mm-hmm. What is? Oh, okay. You're still working on that one. Oh, okay. Let's have a let's have a look at this one. And so, to determine whether a given point uh, is on the graph of a given function f of x, well, in this case we're still working with the same function f of x equals 3x plus or y equals to 3x plus 5 divided by 2x minus 1. So let's test the first point. one comma eight so testing the point one comma eight well what do we do P replace y with eight and x with one eight equals to three times one plus five divided by two times one which is x minus one that equals to eight equals to three times one which is three plus five and in the denominator two times one which is two minus one and well, let's keep simplifying the right hand side and just keep bringing the egg on the left hand side. That'll be okay. 3 plus 5 equals to 8. 2 minus 1 equals to 1. And check how 8 over 1 equals to 8. And because in this case we got a, a true statement, I mean 8 is equals to 8, well, that means the point um, lives on the graph of the function f of x. Let's do the same for the next one. Okay, let's test the point three comma seven. All right, three comma seven. And well, let's see. <laughs> okay, so replace the quantity y with seven and the quantity x with a with a three. So is seven equal to the quantity? What is it? Three times. 3 times 3 plus 5 divided by 2 times 3 minus 1. Well, let's see. <coughs> 7 equals to 9 plus 5 over 2 times 3, which is 6 minus 1. And in this case, well, the, what is this? 14 divided by 6 minus 1, which equals to 5. And well, is 7 equal to 14 over 5? No, so in this case, this is not equal to, and therefore, this point is not on the point, on the graph of the given function. f of x equals to y equals to 3x plus y over 2x minus 1. All right? Well, 
A very classical example that you will see both on the homework, and that's something you should, you, you should expect to see on a future exam or even quiz, actually. Uh, well, that's when we're given this function. We're not given anything about f of x equals 5x minus 7. No, no, no. We're given just a random curve right here with points that we can use uh, as an information here. Let's see. So from this information, from this graph rather, they're asking us to answer the all this part. Find f of 0, f of negative 2, and f of 6. OK. So f of 0, number 1. So they're asking us for the y value for which x equals 0. What is that y value for which x equals 0? Zero. So you can see it on the order pair, actually. So that's one. All right. What about f of negative 2? What is, again, what is the y value related to x equals to negative 2? Hmm? One. One. And you can see it in this order pair here, right? And lastly, uh, f, f of 6. What is f of 6? Zero. Zero. All right. Good. Okay, part B. Is f of 3 positive or negative? Negative, right? So, okay, I know. Uh, so when we look at the graph, notice how the marks for the axis are, uh, as are multiples of 2. But of course, you can uh, do the ones in between, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, f of 3... Well, that's whatever that is. You don't, we don't care about that, num that numerical value. So in this case, we can see that the y value uh, related to x equals to 3, it's, um, it's negative. All right. Now, be careful. Uh, for what values of x is f of x equals to 0? In other words, what are the values of x for which y equal to zero? That is, recall that f of x is can be thought uh, can be thought as y, right? So let's look at all the points that contain a y equal to zero and list them. So x equals comma x equals comma x equals. And maybe four values, I don't know. Well, I'm going to list three. I can see three values. So what are those values, by the way? Zero, four, and six. Zero, four, and six. Do we agree? Yeah. Yep. Zero, zero, four, zero. Yes, for y equals to zero and six, zero. That's correct. Zero, four, and six. That's right. All right, let's see. <clears throat> For what values of x is f of x less than 0? Now we're going to talk about or think of inequalities. In other words, what is this asking us for? Um, mm -hmm. So the interval x values for which the function values that is the y values are negative Right? And well, let's observe the graph. And so again, uh, to answer this question, you can think of the x-axis here as, uh, as dividing the graph into two parts. The upper part of the x-axis will have the graph will have the points on the graph that contain the y the y value as a positive, while the lower half or the lower the, the lower part of the of the x-axis is going to give us all the points for which the y value is actually negative in this case. So in this case, my advice is to highlight that part that is negative. In this case, it's essentially all this part. Now, in this case, we need to 
express or represent that uh, that yellow sector using interval notation. So how do we represent that using interval notation, by the way? Mm -hmm. So x belongs to parentheses 0 all the way to 4. And in this case, we are using parentheses for both because they're asking us for less than. If, it, if they were asking us for less than or equal, we would have used brackets in <coughs> right? Let's see, what's the domain and the range of the function? Well, again, that's going to take us back to what we did at the beginning of the semester when, uh, when we were finding graphs from, or domains and ranges from graphs. So let me erase this shade in yellow. And again, we're going to take the same, the same approach. In order to get the domain of the function, we're going to scan the, the graph from left to right. And to get the range, we're going to scan the graph from bottom to top. All right. Now, uh, what would be the domain of this function, of the function represented by this graph? Again, scan the graph from left to right. Negative, negative, negative four to six. Right, because in this case, <clears throat> the smallest value of x is the one that is the leftmost, all the way to the rightmost value of x which is 6. And in this case, notice how we have solid points at the point negative 4, 2, and at the point 6, 0. So that's the reason why we will represent the domain using an interval. So domain, that'll be from negative 4 all the way to 6. Both endpoints of the interval are going to be included, all right? Well, that's using uh, interval notation. Let's write this down using set builder notation because on a homework, on a quiz, or an exam, you may be asked for either one of the uh, one of the notations or even both notations. So, which is the same as saying x such that all we do is write down the numbers negative four, give some space six the x in the very middle and put greater than or equal, less than or equal symbol to write that interval as an inequality. And that inequality goes inside of the curly brace uh, notation to represent the domain. All right, let's see. What are, oh, that's the domain only. Okay, let me, let me move this over here. What about the range? Okay, range. All right, let, let's have a look at the graph. So in this case, for the range, we need to scan the graph from bottom to top, that is, and we can see that the lowest point, that the lowest what, rather, the lowest y value on a graph, it's indeed negative two, and the largest value, or the highest y value, equals to three. All right, so from negative two to three. Okay, range negative two to three also with brackets and using interval notation that's uh, uh, in this case y such that not x because range is related to the y variable not the x variable that equals to uh, negative 2 less than or equal x which is less than or equal to 3 right The question here is next next part, part F. What are the <coughs> intercepts of this function? Number one, let's list uh, the x-intercepts first. Because, well, the question here is not very specific. Well, since in this case it's not very specific, that means they're asking us for all intercepts, not just the x-intercepts, not just the y-intercepts, or all the, all the intercepts. So let's list the x-intercepts. x-intercepts, whoops. And again, the x-intercepts are the order pairs or the points where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, which one, which one are the x-intercepts? Well, those are 
those are only the x values, all right? But we need the or the full order pairs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me erase all this. Zero, zero, four, zero, and six, zero. All right? Okay, zero, zero, four, zero, and six, zero. All right? What about, okay, that's the x intercept. What about the y intercept? Well, also zero, zero, right? So in this case, so for many cases, like the first example we did for this section and for this graph, it turns out that the origin, when a graph crosses the origin, that origin is both an x-intercept, but it's also a y-intercept, okay? So that's part, what is that, part, uh, part F. Now, letter D, how often does the line y equals to negative 1 intersect the graph? All right. Uh, so let's consider the y, the line y equals to negative one. So that in order to graph that line, that is go to negative one and draw a horizontal line. And the question is, how many times is that horizontal line crossing the graph of f? Two, all right? Two times. What about the line y, or rather x equals to 1, in this case it's a vertical line, x equals to 1, that is, okay, let's go to 1, and in this case how many times? It looks like only, only once, all right, and now, the question here is, for what values of x does f of x equals to 3? In other words, what x values have a y value of 3? All right, so let's go back to the graph. Let's refer to the graph and observe. All potential values that have a y value equals to 3. How many in this case? It's just 1, right? And the x value is 5, right? 5. And less, and, and similarly, uh, same question, what values, okay, what x values have a y value of negative 2, right? Let's go back to the graph and get the information out of there. Okay, uh, did we say negative 1? Or what was that? Negative, negative two rather, negative two. Okay, so what what values do they have? Two. Just two, right? This x equals to two. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's let me write it as x equals to two, and this one as um, x equals to five. All right, let's see. Is, let's see if we have anything else about this uh, section. Looks like that's about it, right? Okay.